Let's dive in as we're getting closer to lunch. Um, a lot of the methods we developed were, were to uh, capitalize on being able to look at formalin and fixed paraffin embedded tissues. They're stored worldwide. There's millions of them out there. Uh, and if we're going to look at disease, particularly cancer, changes in cancer glycosylation, these would be the, the best kind of tissues you could start with if you could make it work. And so, because um, of course you can immunostain one at a time, you can even do the glycoprotein PSA, uh, and this is a prostate, um, but then we were able to map with the different glycans across the, uh, the tissue. Uh, there'll be a theme all the way through this, location, location, location. Um, we're, map we're really effective at mapping uh, different species of N-linked glycans. Um, but th it's also linked to very specific structures, uh, substructures, including tumor. And it's a term we are recalling glycopathology to characterize this. Briefly, um, we started with the same workflow essentially um, that you would use to do immunohistochemistry on a FFPE tissue. So we didn't want to change anything. We didn't want to change any of the workflows that the pathologist would have to use too. So we adapted our workflows to what other people already do. Um, so again, just de-waxing and antigen retrieval, instead of adding an antibody, we spray uh, the pengase enzyme directly onto the tissue. It's a very fine molecular coating. There's no, it's not liquid in any sense. It looks dry when you apply it, actually. Um, as Monfred indicated, it, but at each location, we're generating spectra uh, such that at the end, you can get a, a compilation and essentially do a heat map of every peak location, and that's really what we're looking at with the images. Oh, I skipped ahead. The good part, um, we're using a uh, 7 Tesla FT in this case. Um, we get very precise uh, masses, and we can assign structures quite nicely. The, um, but then, of course, there is the location part. So this was a, a pancreatic, tissue, pancreatic cancer tissue, well annotated, lots of things going on in the tissue. And we, we started noticing early on that there are different glycans associated with specific subregions. And then you can do the overlays like this, get this kind of map. Um, also, once, once they're released, you can do a lot of different validation. Uh, there's some CID functions within the FT. Um, and there's a new instrument coming, which we'll mention briefly, that also be useful. The, in, in terms of the human glycome aspect, um, the method now, is it, I guess we've been doing this uh, three or four years with this TM uh, sprayer. Um, it's really introduced a, a level of reproducibility. And so it really doesn't matter what we put in front of the sprayer, as long as there's tissue or I'll show you later, it could be serum, a cell. Um, you can get a very reproducible spraying of that and, and it's been also quite exportable. Uh, we've published the method um, in the current protocols uh, journal uh, to like a lot of detail if you really want to <laughs> dig into it. Um, and also we can then apply uh, these types of other enzymes. So in essence what we're approaching is we change the signal by changing the enzyme. Uh, using the, the sprayer then lets us do this quite effectively. And don't have time to go through all of it. Uh, my colleagues, Anand Mehta, uh, who made most of the enzymes we use, and Peggy Angel uh, at MUSC, we've, we've recently formed a company to start um, working on some of these proje projects. Uh, we'll, you'll kind of see at the end where I think this company is going. So for tissues, as Mantra said, we've been doing this a while, um, and numbers are, bi are, are building up, particularly if you're using tissue microarrays, where you can get a lot of patient samples in one slide. And so for prostate and breast, we've done well over a thousand patient samples. We're getting higher and higher now with liver cancers, with, with onin, and, and many other tissues. Um, I want to show just one example where we made a custom tissue microarray with 20 tumor types. Um, this, and these weren't for biomarkers, it was just a core where we had a tumor, and then the pathologist selected a region that wasn't tumor, just so we could compare uh, profiling that way. Uh -oh. Where'd it go? Oh, sorry, I've jumped ahead of myself. <laughs> Just wait for that, it's gonna be amazing. Anyway, here's a better data example. We like this co-electro, co-elect, 
colon cancer tissue. Um, you can see the nasty tumor growing into the muscle and growing out from the muscle. Uh, and it's got a lot of nice features. Um, Bruker's been quite helpful. Uh, we've got a lot of software. This is literally push button now. We can generate the spectra. You find a peak, you press the button, you can generate this image. Uh, you can export this in the skills lab analysis software and now export out all, extract out all the intensity data and start doing a lot of stats uh, and, and, and comparisons that way. But you can see kind of the, um, again, you can generate a lot of different structures. Um, we like this one in particular when we're comparing different tissues because it's segmentation analysis. It'll group, you know, what glycans are, are present within the tissue, and it generally will follow the histopathology quite nicely. And you can dig in within each color and, pick, and figure out which glycans are present, and almost always there's a biosynthetic theme to it. Though it'd be like there's a core fucose or not, there's branching, there's, you know, um, it's fascinating to watch how it actually works. Um, we also have a RapiFlex, will get us down into the 10 micron kind of resolution range. The other ones were uh, more in the around 40 micron resolution, and you can get these kind of molecular maps. Um, so this is a pretty picture. So what do we do with this information? There's that amazing TMA I was trying to refer to. Um, if we just home in on, on the higher mass region, um, and I think this follows up nicely what Mike uh, Timeyer was talking about in, in the, the stem cells, that's what we see in all these 20 different tumor types. Um, we'll see that there's a theme, right? There's trisaccharides, tetrasaccharides, I mean, I mean branched, um, but then the decoration it seems to vary uh, specifically with tissue type. Um, and then when the tumor type, also that seems to vary too, that each tissue type, when it has a tumor, tends to follow a certain class and grouping. And so we've looked at 20, um, and almost every single organ's different uh, it's at every level, whether even just the normal or within the tumor. So at best, we've covered 20% of the targets, if that's, that's probably being liberal. Um, there's a lot of things to look at in the human glycome uh, as far as mapping this out. But we already knew that. Um, in general, we see these kind of trends to summarize that last um, picture. Um, as it's progressing, in addition to the high manoses, which I'll come back to, um, we'll see that, you know, I guess it's almost dogmatic, that, that increase in branching. Um, but then it really starts changing. Again, every tumor type, it just seems to differ um, whether you have it, uh, more silylation, more fucosylation, bisects, um, dilacnax, polylacnax, um, it, it's, it's a diverse area. So let me dive into just one example. Um, Monfort also showed, and, and of course with the immunoglobulin uh, G profiling studies, glycans can be very clinical, and we're all moving in that kind of direction. Um, at the tissue level, uh, this is what we see routinely in, in liver cancers, generally two types. One is illustrated on the left, um, and, and that's the type uh, uh, highlighted by that tetraantenary glycan without the fucose, versus the type of tumors we see with the fucose. It's sort of a, a base comparison. The ones without the fucose are always, they, they look like this. They're not subtle. They're always tight. They're right on the tumor. Um, it, it's easy to find them. The 2540, in, in comparison, tends to be much more diffuse, and if we look at uh, two different TMAs, and, and this has been published. Um, we looked at two kinds of examples, just general tumor versus cirrhotic versus normal, or tumor normal pairs across all stages. And you can just see visually uh, this tetra without the fucose lights up in only certain ones and then tends not to show up where the 2540 is present. So there's a differential uh, case there. Um, same when you look at the, the normal tumor pairs. Uh, there's quite a difference. And now we're getting into quickly at the pathology level. These aren't the same. Uh, outcomes aren't the same. Treatment decisions may not be the same. So we're, we're quickly getting into you know, how can you apply whether that, uh, in this case, 2393 is present or not is going to start driving clinical decisions. Um, this may seem like a weird uh, skip, but there's 
a new instrument that was released less than about three weeks ago. Um, this is a Tim's Top Flex. It does incorporate IM Mobility, but it's essentially a multi q TOF. So everything I've shown you, what we can do with the FT and the and the the Rappi, uh, Rappi Flex, we get uh, it's essentially the Rappi Flex laser. It's very high resolution. We can do a 20 micron image in about an hour, uh, hour and a half. Uh, it's going to open up the door for 3D, uh, many other applications, and a lot more throughput, and get the benefit of the resolution. And it has ion mobility separation, so we know how important that's going to be for isomers and glycans. And it has a QTOF on the back end, so we can do some sequencing. I also think it's going to be great for glycopeptides, at least the abundant ones initially. So that's uh, coming. I do have... Um, this is one of our favorite tissues, is, is a because it, it's not subtle. Like, this is a liver cancer. There's either tumor or not tumor, and when we ran it on the uh, Tim's Top Flex, we get very distinct regions. Um, we got about the same mass profile that we can get with the FT. Uh, in general, on this one, we get about 70 glycans, but you can get some really nice. That, that's that tumor uh, normal interface, and, and lots of nice overlays. Um, this was that glycan or this prostate uh, tissue that I showed up front um, with the high manos. And what, what we do see um, with the high manos is that we looked across many, many different tumor types. In prostate, yes, we see lots of high manos in the tumor, but we also see lots of high manos in hyperplasia regions. If we look in colon, we'll see them in adenomas. Um, there's other tumors where it's only showing up in the tumor. So it's kind of case by case how these high manos is. In, in no scenario do they seem to be good indicators of something good happening. Um, but, uh, you know, hyperplasia, uh, tumor, so it's something we're keeping an eye on. Um, we've also got some initial IM mobility data. You can separate the, the, the high man isomers, and that's a whole other thing that might be interesting. Um, Bruker likes this image now because it's, it's for people with different degrees of color blindness. They like this. I'm still trying to get used to it, um, but we'll see. So it's hard to say, uh, be presumptuous to say that we're looking at any masterpieces yet on our images, or are we? <laughs> Segway. So let me let me end um, with a few examples. Uh, um, once we had nailed down the method, and this was, was very reproducible as far as the, the signal, and with the pen gaze we're using, it's essentially if we can get it on to the, whatever we're trying to, to uh, digest, we're going to see signal. Um, and it isn't like you get something that's unexpected. That's the beauty of the end links. Um, there's only so, there are many, many ways, that the, there are many variations, but there's only so many ways you're going to see in the mass spec, particularly in the, the lower mass ranges. So we've just recently adapted this to an antibody slide array. So if, this is old technology, uh, antibodies to serum glycoproteins. If you put them on the array and then pull them down with, um, just add serum. So we know where the antibody was on the slide because that's where we put it. So now we know where the target, what was captured also. So then we spray it solid phase like it's tissue. And so there, therefore there's no migration away from the spot. And so, um, it's essentially an imaging mass spec workflow. We can also use the software in the back end uh, to then quantitate uh, the results. And so this was um, just a quick example. Um, we beat this to death, uh, I should say, my student Allison Black uh, did extensive amount of work to prove the specificity of this, uh, which I'm only summarizing in one slide. Um, but it was just published so you can, you can check out to see how we uh, navigated this to get that but realistically, if we can do two, we can do four. If we can do four, we can do eight. I think we're up to eight right now as far as it, that's the easy button. Um, the kind of slide Monfred showed with the, let's say the top 20 or 30 serum glycoproteins, we can easily get this on and, and profile, essentially glyco profile each one of those samples and start doing that sort of amazing calculation of how each individual glycoproteins changing with a, a disease state. Um, 
there's a throughput component there that um, we're still working on also, but it's, it doesn't take that long. Really, the, only t the biggest time is the incubation on the slide. Um, we're going after a lot of targets this way because uh, Anan has patented a long time ago that fucosylated glycoproteins in, H in uh, liver cancer. Um, so we're looking at a lot of different uh, uh, commercial possibilities with this. And if we can, if we can uh, do an antibody capture, what if you just spot serum? This isn't that trivial because you have to keep it there. So we've been messing with how you get it onto the slide. But once we keep it on the slide, then we just pretend it's tissue um, and we can get a good distribution. Um, six hours, that's being conservative. Uh, we think we can get this into a, a much even faster clinical range with, with some temperature incubations and uh, probably two hours from application to data uh, acquisition. And so, um, this was a liver cancer example, um, and this is part of where we're going with, with our studies is to try to figure out, can we look at the serum glycans? Those are the same two I was talking about in the liver cancer tissues. Can we start putting them back on the carriers uh, and use that as a, as a diagnostic? Um, and then this is, this is old history for me, but looking at uh, prostatic fluids, um, again, we just spot it. We can spray it, we can uh, start getting glycan profiles. That's another area to go back to. And I'll just end briefly. Um, Peggy Angel has developed uh, an on slide method, essentially just growing the cells on a slide. And then you fix them, uh, and then we can spray them. And uh, so she does have single cell glycomics because you can just literally hit it with a laser and that single cell and get a profile. So I don't know if that, how that counts. But, uh, and it wasn't endothelial cells, so this wasn't a challenge. So they were pretty big targets. But um, she's submitted this. Uh, there's a lot going on here that uh, she's also uh, adapted into SILAC but, but based on time. Uh, I just want to highlight that essentially um, we're working in that direction. And really this is where I'll end. Um, this is our vision component. I think it integrates well with the human glycome project. Uh, that for an individual sample, and again, particularly in a cancer um, patient aspect where, where we're going to have tissue at some point, um, linking the end glycan imaging uh, as well as other targets, but then doing blood. Uh, we could do total glycan, uh, antibody arrays, uh, immunoglobulin arrays, all of the arrays, uh, but also immune cells themselves probably stuck to a slide. Um, and what if you do what? you know, essentially ending up with a patient-specific clinical glycotyper uh, test that, you know, we all, we've, we've been hearing it more and more, uh, I mean, the whole meeting, these are important and they're telling you stuff clinically. So we think we got a way, workflow to, to really get this into the, the clinician's hands at some point. Um, and just a quick acknowledgement of uh, uh, the, the group um, and uh, these people. And again, appreciate your time and the opportunity to present. Thanks.